This video will talk about finding domain and range, specifically looking at graphs and being able to find the domain and range. But first we need to know what a domain and a range is. So the domain is all possible inputs. Usually that'll be our x's. What x's are allowed for this on this graph? So all possible inputs. And then it would probably make sense then that the range is going to be all possible outputs or typically your y values outputs and notice that it says possible okay we could pick any x we want but some of them may not work or we could pick an x and then we find out that oh it doesn't have a y so then it would not have a possible output let's look at our first example here this is a line it's a linear function so looking graphically this line is going to go on forever up and forever down. If I had enough space on my graph, if I looked at like x is equal to negative 5, I would eventually hit my graph. And if I picked 5, I can see that one. If I picked negative 10 out here, then if I went down, I'd eventually hit my line. So if you think about it that way, there are no x's that I will not have a y value. We would say that this is all reals. There, every x I can plug into a linear function and get an output. And the shorthand writing for reals is a double backed R. So you can use either one of those. And in fact, if we talk about interval notation, interval notation would go from negative infinity to infinity. Interval notation uses parentheses and brackets, and infinities always use parentheses. Because remember, out here is going to be negative infinity on my x-axis, and over here will be positive infinity eventually on my x-axis. So let's talk about the range then. How far up and how far down? Domain is how far to the left and how far to the right. Range is how far up and how far down does this graph go? Well, notice there are arrowheads on the ends of my line, meaning it's going to keep going up forever and it's going to keep going down forever. So again, we have all reals or our double back R, or in interval notation, and let me write that here so that we get the difference. Interval notation would be negative infinity to infinity. Let's look at this example. This is a quadratic that we'll eventually talk about, but quadratics are a little bit different than linears in that you can see that we have a lowest point on this graph. Now again, this graph is going to go up and it's going out as it goes up. So it's going out and up forever. So that means that if I came over here to 10, I eventually would go up and hit my parabola. It might be a really large number, but I'd hit my parabola. So we would say that our domain has, again, all reals or negative infinity to infinity. And if we look at the range then, we're thinking how high and how low does this graph go? Well, we already know it's going to go up to positive infinity. It's going to go up forever. But it has a lowest point on it. It doesn't go down forever. It stops when y is equal to negative 4. So that means that we could say either y is greater than or equal to, because it's right there on that point, greater than or equal to negative 4. Or in interval notation, we could write the smallest value is negative 4. The largest value is infinity. Negative 4 is included, so we use a bracket and parenthesis for infinity. This is what we call an exponential function, and let's look at its domain and range. How far to the left and how far to the right? Once again, this graph is going to go up forever, and it continues to move out, and this one's going to go down this direction and continue on forever and ever and ever. Now, when we think about the domain, how far to the left is it going to go? It's going to go to negative infinity. And how far to the right is it going to go? It's going to eventually go to infinity. If I went way out here, over here, and tried to go to my graph, I might have to get to the ceiling, but I eventually would hit my graph. So again, we say that the domain is all reals. I'll put them all three up there again this time. All reals, or the shorthand is a double back R. And if we do interval notation, it goes from negative infinity, the smallest value, to infinity, the largest value. Both get parentheses because they're infinite. Now the range is a little tricky here. When we think about the range, we can see that it's going to go up forever. So it's going to go to positive infinity. But it doesn't go 
down forever. In fact, it's a little hard to see with this graph because we can't get it real fine here. But you can see that this graph looks like it gets right on the x-axis, but in reality it gets really close to it, but never ever really crosses it. I hope you can see that it doesn't go below the x-axis. So we would say that this one, if we're just writing what the values are, we could say that y had to be greater than 0. When we talk about these functions, it'll make more sense why it can't be equal to 0. It has to be greater than 0 in this case. And in interval notation, we would say that it goes from 0 to infinity. It doesn't include 0 because it's greater than 0, so a parenthesis for 0 and a parenthesis for positive infinity. So our final example here, we're going to talk about domain and range of a model. And in a model, you've got real life situation. If you see this graph, I've drawn this graph so that you can see what the function of just the equation would be. But in real life, we don't start with negative time back here. So we start at this point right here. And this is the path of a rocket. And the ground is considered the x-axis. So we, don't, we want to stop at the ground. So we won't go below the x-axis at all. So in our domain, we've gone from 0, when time begins, over to 8. And we'll call this seconds. And we'll call the y value, we'll call that feet. So when we think about the domain here, we would say that it starts at 0 seconds, that's the smallest value, and it ends at 8 seconds. And it starts at exactly 0 seconds, so that's a bracket. And it ends at exactly 8 seconds, so it would be a bracket there. It includes those values. So for the range values, then, we can see that the lowest place that it hits is the ground. And the highest point it gets to would be this point right here, called the vertex. And if you look at that, that looks like it's right straight across from 25. So the lowest value for the range would be the ground, or 0 feet. And the highest point this toy rocket gets is 25 feet, and it includes both. It hits the ground, so it's included, and it actually gets to 25 feet, so that's also included. That would be the interval notation. That's usually the easiest way to do model domains and ranges, because it's a definitely just an interval of numbers. And that's how you find domain and range from a graph.